Right. Hello, everyone. My name is Stefan Schroeder. I would like to give you a bit of an overview of what studying geology in Manchester is all about. Um, it really is about understanding the processes that shape the Earth how it is today. And this understanding that we as geologists have will put us in a very unique position to really address some of the important questions and some of the important issues that happen on our planet today. And I just wanted to do this by highlighting by highlighting um, just a few areas um, of how geologists at Manchester and their students work towards this um, and highlight some of the type of careers you might be doing using um, how they fit into the United Nations um, Sustainable Development Goals in this, in this graph here. Just a quick reminder of what these, what these are. They basically, the idea of this is to promote prosperity while protecting our planet. And I've just highlighted here in the black outlines some of those uh, UN goals that where geology is probably most relevant to. And the first example I wanted to show you guys is from um, environmental and landscape protection, as you can see with the red box here on the right. And the thing which is in the news these days a lot is microplastics. Obviously, we use plastics a lot for packaging and all other sorts of things. And after they um, get thrown away, the little pieces, as you can see on the pictures here on the left, end up in the environment. And that has a major environmental impact. Now, they, um, they are produced by us. They end up in rivers on land and the rivers will carry these microplastics off to sea where they get redistributed by various kinds of processes. Um, they get distributed in the marine and the terrestrial ecosystems and they get picked up by fish for example and that obviously has major implications for ecosystems. Now we at Manchester what we do is for example we study the physical processes that actually transport um, these particles, these microplastic particles, which allows us then to make predictions about where they might end up, what volumes you might expect in certain ecosystem and certain environments, and this in turn will inform uh, protection measures and obviously that can also be communicated with um, government organizations and NGOs. So this is obviously quite a relevant geological study, but in addition, it requires a background in uh, physics as physical processes are basically determining how these uh, particles are being transported. And here's just an example of one of our recent MFSI fourth year uh, students collecting samples out in Liverpool Bay for uh, his study in intramicroplastics. And um, so this is the kind of typical field work that might be expected. If we're studying geology here, it also shows how um, geologists are out and about in all sorts of weathers. The second example I just wanted to talk about really briefly is um, about critical resources. And that is important for battery technologies, for example. So critical resources are of growing economic importance. And two examples here are platinum and lithium, as I can show you. These are important, for example, for batteries. And as such are important um, materials, raw materials for a transition into a low carbon economy. At the same time, critical um, resources are also critical because um, they have a high risk of supply shortage. Uh, for example, because they come only from certain countries um, or from certain deposits. And this is illustrated as well in these two graphs on the right, lithium. About 75% of the global lithium resources come from just Australia and Chile. And on the left side, you have the same for platinum, which I've highlighted there in the purple colors. Again, about 75% of the platinum elements come from a single deposit in South Africa. So again, illustrating the point that these are critical resources. As geologists, how we get involved in this? Uh, for example, on the left side, you have a picture of an outcrop. These black bands in the rock formations, they contain the platinum. So as a geologist, we are involved in mapping out these deposits on a large scale, where they occur, how extensive they are. We can estimate the thickness and from that we can estimate how much there actually is of platinum or other metals. 
So this is large scale geological mapping, understanding the distribution of some of these deposits. And at the same time on the right, we have some really small scale pictures of minerals that contain the PGEs, which are the platinum group metals and other metals. So involving um, very detailed small scale study of these deposits and the geochemistry. Um, so this again shows us the importance of field work, being out in the fields, which is quite integral to geology, but it also shows us the importance of um, chemistry uh, in our degree. And the third and final example I just want to really briefly show you is one which is related to engineering geology, but also informs um, non-governmental organization and science policy. And this goes back a little bit to what Brendan just said. It's the impact of climate change related dust on flying. Obviously, we know that um, um, this, with the climate change, there's more dust in, in the atmosphere, and this has a major impact on aircraft engines. And so we here in Manchester, we do work on actually how um, the physical and chemical processes that control how mineral particles are transported through an engine and the damage that these particles may have on the engine. And I won't go into, mu into much of the detail, but you can see on the picture on the lower right here how some of these particles that go through these engines at very high speed have a major uh, damage effect on, the, on these blades. So this is a job for geologists, but it really links into things like aerodynamics, into thermodynamics and kinematics. So it's really at the borderline between geology and engineering as a very relevant application of geology. This is all I wanted to say, and I'm happy to take any more questions.